Good afternoon internet and welcome along to this video where I'll be building up a C file server. A C file server will provide me services much like Google Drive and what's that other one? Dropbox and other services. Uh, it'll be contained in my home on my local area network. Um, at the router we'll put a block on there so that the um, internet traffic cannot come into my local area network uh, and because of that I will not be setting up a security certificate for the purpose of encrypted connections I won't need it however this is only part one there will be a part two coming up at some point and um, we will implement that into this particular installation now the server will be running on Raspberry Pi computers uh, that's one of these things let me show you this one actually so this is a Raspberry Pi computer you can buy these on just the computer itself or you can get kits which come with uh, you know, the circuit board it comes with some kind of enclosure that you can put it in um, this one here has got a sort of a transparent enclosure um, you, you can buy kits which means often they'll come with a power supply uh, memory to go in there and that's really about it and you can buy other kits to suit your situation so that's what we'll be running them on now this particular Raspberry Pi I've had for a number of years and I've done a little bit of a test run today and um, the installation um, processes because I know in the past you know you, you do something you know two three years ago and you try and do the same thing today and you're sort of tempted to upgrade everything get the latest version software so on and so on and I ran into a few sort of situations and one situation is this here this particular model for some reason cannot get um, cannot connect to 5G Wi-Fi signals so I thought to myself I'm pretty sure I have another one which I do and I've found that this one can so this is the one that I'll be using uh, we could use an Ethernet cable for our internet but I'm going to go wireless in this particular installation and this one here I've been wanting to build another project at some point some sort of an audio boombox type arrangement so I think I might use that for that particular job and our data for C file will be the application will be installed on one of these on the SD card and the operate the operating system and the C file server application will be on the SD card but our data for my files and so on personal files videos photographs documents that sort of thing that'll be contained on a hard drive which will plug into there uh, in this particular setup I'll be setting it up with uh, this particular hard drive this is a two terabyte drive but uh, long term I have a plan to replace this for something that's uh, more durable and will sort of go the distance um, so that's that's the plan uh, it'll be running in a headless operation or headless situation which is basically a fancy way of saying when this computer is set up running somewhere as a server there will not be a keyboard connected to it a mouse or a monitor um, yeah so they call that headless um, because it is headless I'll be re making a remote connection to it we'll first start off with uh, I think it's called SSH secure secure shell connection or something like that we'll make an SSH connection to it and then from there we'll enable VNC which is a virtual network computing protocol we'll enable that which means we'll be able to log in this is my daily driver computer here I'll be able to log in as if this computer is in front of me so we'll see the computer desktop so that's the plan uh, I want to get this sort of 
clipped on ASAP because I've got the sun beaming in. We've got a bit of a light situation here. And, and yeah, it's, it's hot. I've got a fan there, but it's <clears throat> going to create a lot of noise in the microphone and so on. So we'll jump onto the computer in a minute and we'll take it from there. All right, so we want to download the operating system for our Raspberry Pi. Just bring up a browser. You need to download an application. Um, well, that's the recommended method. I've already got the application downloaded and installed, but let me just show you that. So I recognize you guys might be on um, Windows computers or Mac computers. So this is the application here. You just see my mouse circling around. So it's going to look like this. So I've got a Mac OS download here and one for Windows. Since I'm a Linux user I'll be going for Ubuntu. So as I say I've already got that installed so I can close this. And let's fire up that application. And I'm going to choose the device. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Uh, that one there. I'm going to choose the operate, operating system. Now if you notice here it says recommended. So the computer is a 64-bit computer and they're recommending the 32-bit operating system. So I'm going to take their word on that. I've had the uh, Raspberry Pi running uh, C4 for a number of years with the 32-bit OS and without issues so I know that's good to go so I'm going to go with that and then um, we need to put our SD card into your SD card reader slash writer so I've got that in my hand here I'm just going to slide that into my writing device now and you might see that pop up on the screen here there it is so I'm going to choose that now click that choose and here it is here USB it's a 32 gig SD card which is that one now take your time here you don't want to start uh, writing over your other hard drives with your photos and personal documents and that so yeah take extreme care here I know mine is that one so I'm good to go there I'm going to click next it's asking me what I like to write some OS customization settings now the computer will be running in a headless manner meaning no mouse keyboard and um, screen so we need to make a remote connection into it without all that hardware so we can do that with a client called SSH secure shell can't remember what the H stands for so we need to edit the settings now as you can see I've done a bit of a test run already and I'm calling my host name cfile01 you call yours what you like and for the operating system I'm giving it a username of that mugwai and that's my password there and your Wi-Fi connection you can enter that connection data here because remember as soon as that computer turns on we need to remotely connect to it and without it connecting to the Wi-Fi signal we won't be able to do that so enter that stuff in there, I'm all good to go, that data's already entered for me. I'm in New Zealand, so I've chosen the country there, and my locality settings is done, and my keyboard is US, so I'm happy with that. And then, uh, basically, would you like to apply the settings? Let's just have a look back in there again. Services, yes, enable this enable SSH without that we won't be able to remote connect into the computer so do that and yeah we're good to go now and then we can answer yes to this would you like to apply the settings yes and it's just warning us that all the data on the SD card whatever's on there now is going to get overwritten so if you've got photos in that now now's the time to save it and rescue it okay 
Are you sure you want to continue? I'm going to go with yes. And my password for my operating system here. Okay, now that's going to take a little while. I'm going to let that run and I'll be back. Alright, operating system has been written to the SD card. Let's click continue. Let's close that window. And I'm going to pull the SD card out of the reader slash writer. Alright, I'm going to walk the SD card over to the Raspberry Pi computer. I'm going to insert it. I'm going to power up the computer. I found an image online that you might like to look at. And the so you can see what we're up to. Here's the SD card there, we're going to insert that. So, it's not the exact one of course, but get the picture. Alright, the SD card is in, in the computer and I've just hit the power button and we'll just wait a while and once we think it's booted up then we can make a remote connection into it and we'll make that connection using an application called putty i know putty is available on windows i've used it before uh, we're on linux here so and then we need to put the ip address there which i don't have we need to wait for the computer to power up and um, do a search on our network and find that IP address. So let's just wait for that. Okay, the computer should have powered up by now. So we now need to search for the IP address. Now I've got an app on my phone, it's called Network Scanner. I'm going to do a screen recording of that right now and it's launched that application and it's going to scan the network and find that particular computer and I can see it now second up from the bottom if you remember we put our host as cfile01 so that's it there so the IP address is I'm just going to enter that in as I read it 192 dot one six eight dot one dot two four five let's go open cool and we're going to enter in our login details if you remember we entered that stuff in the imaging software so I'm going to enter that in now Great, so now we've got a command line into that computer. And what we need to do now is um, configure VNC that is so that we can remote into the desktop of that computer. So we're not dealing with just text, we can have a nice pretty uh, graphical user interface. So, to do that we go, is it sudo? Uh, rasp i dash config okay now we go down here to interface options and choose VNC would you like the VNC server to be enabled yes VNC virtual network computing so that should enable that we can now close that I'm going to tab down there to choose finish hit enter and now I can escape from this um, terminal here and with a bit of luck I can fire up our VNC software or our VNC client software and create a connection in here new connection I'm gonna give this the IP address 
192.168.1.245 and I'm going to give this a friendly name it can be whatever you want so C file 01 is what I'm going to call mine and I want it nested in this under this label here you see my one devices so I'm going to just put that in here and choose this here hit OK and it should pop up on our right there there it is now with a bit of luck I'm not sure we may have to restart that computer I'm not quite sure let's double click that and try and connect perfect so this is also telling me that a connection is being attempted so let's go continue enter in our username and enter in our password now when I hit enter I should see a nice pretty computer desktop and there it is now I actually hate that photograph it's it's, it's a bit in your face so I'm going to get rid of that right now and I know there's the fisherman here somewhere there it is right done while we're here this little icon here you might have to wait a while but this eventually will pop up this icon and that will have updates so we can look at the updates so I will choose show updates and then you can just look through here and just, you know, just out of interest what's going to get updated and then click install. And again, that's going to take a little while. So again, I'll be back. Well, what we want to do now is build a folder structure to hold our application. So let's do a right click there, new folder apps and let's go in there new folder again C file and I think that's all we need there that's where we're going to put our application so and now we need to go and download it so let's fire up Chromium our browser first time you fire up things on a fresh operating system uh, things do take a little while because they need to you know do things for the first time you know so this thing is going to have that horrible search engine called DuckDuckGo or whatever it is but anyway, let's just go with that. And let's type C file. down and find our server for Raspberry Pi there it is there latest version let's click that and I'll just scroll down here very slowly very easy to go past all the download links because they're not at the bottom for some reason they're in the middle somewhere there they are 
so those are our options for downloads now I always forget the command to find the uh, operating system version and everything so I'm just going to pause this recording and I'll do a bit of research and find the command for that alright so there's our command right there now before I start punching that into our terminal just so that you can see this easily because I find this quite small to read um, and YouTube and that so let's just try and edit this and bump the size up a little bit the size of the text 16 All right. so let's grab that command there and let's paste it into here, control right click and paste and let's enter that so you see there, bullseye that's the part I'm looking for, so if we go back to our download downloads and we'll look for bullseye here it is, bullseye remember I'm going to go for the 32-bit uh, application and we need to save that somewhere you can see it's saving there one download in progress is it done okay so let's click that find your downloads here Okay, there it is there. So let's grab that, right click, extract to. So that's a compressed file, so we need to extract it to our installation folder or our install folder which I created earlier. I'm just gonna have to wait for that to do its thing. Okay, we need to click this little icon here of the folder and choose the folder where we're going to extract it to. And we're going to put it apps C file, we're going to put it there. And click extract. Ok, that's done, now if we go over here to apps and then the C file, we should see that has been extracted, there it is there, and we should we see some more data in there, perfect. Now what we're going to do next is install an application called Dolphin and another one called Console. So this window that I'm moving around here is a file manager and Dolphin is also a file manager so I prefer to use Dolphin over this and I'll explain as we go along the reasons so right now I'm going to close that application I'm going to close the browser and this is also a file manager and I'm going to close that as well and I'm going to come up to our terminal, we're going to launch that and I'm going to install Dolphin with the command sudo app install Dolphin and 
Now this will take quite a while, so it's another one of those waiting games. Okay, that's done and we will immediately install the console. So yes. And let's quickly have a look at our menu and make sure those two applications are there, which they are. So that's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure consoles for easy reading. I'm concerned that it's going to be a little too small for people to read. So let's just see if we can dump the text up a little bit. size up a little 12, 30, 40, 15, 16 let's try that set that as default let's start that up again yeah that's a bit better isn't it um, the cursor's moving away you see that cursor yeah, it's moving away. What we've got to do to fix that is um, change the font to a mono space. Uh, there we go. We'll go with that one. It's mono space, yep. Let's just check that again. That's better. Okay. Now that's file manager. I'm actually gonna remove that from the panel. like a panel and a panel I've just wiped everything haven't I oh no right so I've lost the uh, terminal like on there but that's fine because I'm going to use console anyway um, so I'll remove those two icons there uh, so this is our new file manager we're going to use Dolphin and we're going to use this console terminal here and the reason I've installed these two is console plays nicely with dolphin and dolphin's going to have a nice little feature that's going to help us expand our uh, storage space on our c file installation to an external usb drive all right so what we're going to do now is extract uh, sorry so what we're going to do now is uh, run our c file setup script so let's go and look for that now. And so this is Dolphin. Now there's a little button here. We can click that. And come right down to the bottom here. Go in the show menu. So we get a nice menu in our Dolphin application. And now if we go to our C file install folder which is there and then there, this is the folder that was extracted. If we look in here, 
let's just change the view of that to details there should be a setup script in here can you see that set up c file no that one there set up c file so we need to execute that script now if we just go back one and yeah so let's go back so you can see what's going on here home apps c file i'm going to do a right click on there and then i'm going to open that in the terminal now this is the part where it opens in console if we didn't have console this option would not be here so there it is we're now running console let's do a directory and where is our setup script setup c file there it is there so what we want to do is execute that setup script we'll start that with a dot and a slash for script setup dash c file dash sh and now that should set up our application we might need a pen for this can't remember let's press enter this script will guide you to configure the setup for your c file server okay let's press enter And what it's telling us there is it cannot find uh, SQLite, which is some sort of database module. So we need to install that. Um, it's got the command there. You see that? Apt get install. Let's just try and copy that. Let's take a copy of that. Let's open up another terminal. Let's click control, right click and paste. And let's press enter there. Permission denied. So what we need to do is paste that again, right click and paste. Go to the beginning and put a sudo there. Alright, now that should be okay. Great, so that should now be in. We can close that terminal there, come back down to our terminal here and give this another go. If we press the up button, we should get previous commands. So there it is there. Let's run that again. Enter. And we know here is this time. So let's enter again. That looks all good. Now it's asking us for a server name. What would you like to use as the name of this C file server? Your C file users will be able to see the name in their C file, C file client. So I'm going to keep it the same, keep it consistent. Uh, C file 01 is what I'll call it. And the IP address. Uh, There's something I forgot to do and that's okay we sh we've got time to do that now let's just leave that window open let's come up here to our Wi-Fi connection let's do a right click wireless and wide network settings let's open that let's change this to WLAN now Somewhere during the install process, it's decided between the router and and the operating system, it's decided on what IP address to use. Now I can't rely on that. I need to know what the IP address is always and confidently. So what we're going to do is force an IP address of our choice, and I'm going to call it 192.168.1.1. And I'll leave that ticked and automatically configure empty options so all the rest should be automatically configured. So with that we can apply that and
close. Now that IP address is not going to be reflected until we reboot this operating system. So I'm going to close that now. And then I'm going to enter that IP address in here. 192.168.1.91 And the reason I've chosen 91 is because I've actually got another server running in the other room as we speak. And that IP address is Da -da 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 -da, 9 2. So this will be 9 1 and the other one will be 9 2. Okay. So we enter that there, enter. And it's asking us for a port for TCP. Uh, and it's recommending that, so we'll just push enter there. And it's giving some uh, information there for us to review. I'm just going to take a photograph of that. And I'm going to press enter. Now it's talking about C-Hub. C-Hub is the web interface to the C-File server. So let's press enter now to continue. It just created the database. It's given us some more information there. So C-Hub, I'll take another photograph of that. And that's it. Now as I say, that IP address will not take effect until we restart this, so I'm going to do a shutdown and a reboot. So what we need to do now is uh, VNC back into our server using the new IP address that we've just set. So let's do that. Um, C file 01 isn't it? Go to properties and let's correct this IP address to 91 and that should be our new IP address. Hit OK. Let's double click that now. Here it is. Got a new certificate warning. Is that a certificate? I don't know what you call that anyway. Continue and let's put our password. And there you have it. Right, so what I want to do now is just do some quick visual checks. So let's fire up Dolphin and have a look around. And let's go home apps file it looks okay so these folders outside of this folder here were not there prior to running the setup script so that's that's all done the right thing so I'm happy there now if we look in is it conf I think it is we need to modify this file here, so let's do a right click and um, can we edit that? Open with a text editor. Okay. And in here we need to change this IP address to reflect the IP address that we connected to on the network. So let's change that 192.168.1.91 uh, isn't it? Okay, and let's save that. So that's our IP address set. Now if we go back to that photograph I took there was some information there which told us that our C file data you know all our 
our personal files that this is going to look after is going to be in here, C file data. Not C hub data. You know, I just want to have a quick look in here. That yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right there. So what we got to do is this SD drive, if you remember, is only 32 gigabyte of memory, which is very very tiny. I have one file that's going to easily fill that up. So and yet, yet alone the thousands and thousands of other files I have so I need you know one to two terabytes of memory and what we have here is just simply not enough uh, so what we have to do is add an external hard drive to the Raspberry Pi and this is where um, the application Dolphin comes in what we need to do is create a symbolic link. Now I read about this and, and you know I've done this quite a few years ago and I'm not doing these things all the time so um, I find it quite difficult to remember especially command lines and we're in 2020, it won't be long now we'll be in 2024 and um, yeah I'm just done with command lines I mean they're great but for someone like me who's not sitting at the computer punching in command lines all the time, they're not very easy to remember. So, with that, um, we're going to use Dolphin to create a symbolic link. But before I do that, I need to plug in the hard drive to this computer. So just give me a moment. There's the hard drive there that's popped up. Now this is old data, so I'm going to get rid of that. So Dolphin here moved to waste basket basket. If I press shift, it'll change to remove, which is basically like a proper delete. So that'll get wiped off the external hard drive which is a two terabyte drive okay so that's our empty hard drive now I've called it blue transcend because it's actually a blue blue drive and that's the brand so what we're going to do now is we want to take this C file data folder I'm going to do a right click a cut and then I'm going to paste it into our into the external USB drive like so and then what I need to do now is create a symbolic link to that so coming back over here remember that was a cut and a paste so it's not over here anymore what I need to do is make a symbolic link in here to there. So we do a right click, and this is where Dolphin comes in very handy. New basic link to file or directory. We click that, click this icon here, click our directory, and then we navigate to that folder there, which we go computer, go to media, mugwai blue trans in c file data choose that and it'll populate this here click ok and there you have it you see that little downward pointing arrow that tells us it's a symbolic link if we click in there we will see what we see up here perfect so we've got our external memory configured all right, we're reaching the exciting part of starting the server for the very first time. So let's go across to our server. 
and let's fire up Dolphin let's go home app C file now let's go down here you see here C file latest we're going to click that to a right click open terminal here so that will get us into the right place in the terminal now let's do a directory okay now the scripts of interest is the c file script and the c hub script so basically we need to start those and you start the c file first and then the c hub last c hub is the web interface so let's start up the c file uh, server with I think we're going to need sudo, I can't remember, dot slash uh, cfile dot sh and then we go space and then do a start enter great so cfile server has started we're going to need a pen here it's going to ask me some more questions I think I can't remember that either um, dot slash C hub dot sh and start so that'll start the web interface now you need an administration account and basically the administrator can assign many users so you might have um, your employees you can give each of them an account where they can store their files and synchronize their files and whatnot and that is all administered by the administrator and the administrator needs an email account so I'm going to put an email account now this email account is actually not real so don't go emailing me it ain't going to work because it's not a real email account and it's going to be called that I'm going to write it down in case I forget so that's the email account for the administrator and a password and verify the password okay done all right so the server should be started I'm just going to take my mouse up there seems too easy okay now let's come back over here to my computer let's start up a browser I'm running um, the brave browser here I do have other browsers Firefox and Chrome and whatnot so let's enter the IP address of our server which is 192.168.1.91 and it's on port 8000 so colon 8000 press enter now it's the very first time this has ever been launched so it's going to take a little while to do its thing uh, but once it's running we should be all good nice so now we enter in our administration account and enter the password and we should be able to log in and there we are so I'm going to save that password so we don't have to enter it in all the time and now uh, as I say I've done some test uh, test runs over the last few days and I've found a few things that we need to do immediately so let's go down to a system administration and let's come down to settings
now I found if I do not put here colon eight if I don't put that then for some reason I can't update my profile image which is up here where my mouse is so I put a colon eight thousand there and we also need this you've got to hit this tick button if you don't tick that tick that it wasn't I won't get saved so click that we get the success notification there and then we come over here we do the same 192 not the same we make sure that IP address reflects the one above 192.168.1.91 we'll leave that 8082 as it is and again we must tick this okay now that's saved and if I come down here to users I like to give the administration the administer sorry the administrator um, at least five gig of storage space so let's edit the storage space so this is where you give each user a quota so you tick this here and I want to give this person at least five gig well I'll make it 10 gig okay so the administrator has 10 gig of storage space now we can click there go to settings now this is where I can enter the administrator's uh, avatar so we can click that there we can choose an avatar There's one there. Alright. Now I think this image here will not get changed until I log out and log back in. So I'm going to log out right now and log in again. I think we're good to go now let's do a quick test and make sure we can do some editing here uh, let's go new file notes.txt so that's working let's come in here let's see if we can add some notes this is a test let's come up here and save it that's working nicely another day I hope everyone's having a good Christmas break out there um, all right the server's running we've done a test at the web interface and everything seems to be just going nicely there two weeks go by and then we get a power cut the computer goes down power comes back online and obviously the server is not going to start since we started it manually so we need to um, deal to that situation and the manual of C file if you look in the manual you'll see all this stuff here and there's a few different techniques to automatically start the server uh, when it needs to now I understand why what the need is for such complex uh, stuff here and with complexity comes often problems getting these things working and it seems I'm not the only one um, seems to be a lot of posts around people struggling to get any of these working now I've had one of these working in the past on a client computer and that was a number of years ago and you know I cannot remember how I did it to be honest uh, thinking about it I could remotely access that computer and figure it out but I decided no I'm going to bail do something a lot more simpler do something what a human would do so and I've already done a test run and that's working fine and I'll show you what, I, what I've come up with 
by the way if anyone has worked through any of these and has successfully started up the server on a Raspberry Pi in particular Pi 3B plus then yes please please share in the comments all right let's bring up our uh, server and a remote log into it there it is there let's get rid of all this visual noise around us you might have noticed I've put a nice yellow mouse of course it changes when I use the other computer anyway um, so basically I ran I built a script to run two more scripts and I'll show you where I put those it's run dolphin I've dragged dolphin and console out of the menu here so I don't have to go through there all the time and um, remember I put a folder in there where we put our server that's up here in apps and I put another folder here called startup scripts and then in that startup script I created a text file just a regular text file and this is what I've called it cfile white pie dot sh and the only reason I called it that was uh, my raspberry pi is in a white enclosure you must end it with a sh because that's going to tell the system that it's a script let's open that and this is basically what I put in there now this is a script what's going to happen is it's going to do what we did manually it's going to first it's going to wait 20 seconds remember you've just turned on the computer you know it's got to connect to the hard drive find an internet connection and do whatever it has to do uh, and then at that point we can then start the C file server so I'm just going to wait 20 seconds start the C file server again that takes a little while to happen so we wait again to 20 seconds and then we can start C hub which is our web interface so put that in there you also need this that's very important uh, I'll see if I can put this in the description on YouTube so you won't have to type it all out and basically save that now it's nice to actually test your script before we go any further because remember that's just the scripts something has to run that let's run it manually ourselves I'm going to do a right click open terminal here so we're in that folder there I'll show you the IR okay so there's our text file so to run a script like that oh sorry the other thing you need to do is just make do a right click on there go to properties go to permissions and make sure it's set to execute if that file is not executable you're going you're to run into problems so do that okay then go to your console do a directory so you can see what you're going to type there to start a script you need to go dot and then a slash and then we just type in that okay now I've actually got the C file already running so we're gonna see some messages reflecting that hopefully so if we execute that we should restart the um, servers I won't restart it'll just tell us that it's already started now you can see there it's not doing anything well wow, it's not supposed to until 20 seconds later remember so we'll just wait 20 seconds there it is C file controller is already running so we know that part's working then it's going to wait 20 more seconds because you know it takes a little while for the C file server to get up and running and then it tries to start the C hub server which is the web interface and again it's telling us it's already running great so we know that script is uh, fine and 
good to go. Now the next thing is we can stay in the terminal here. The next thing is we need to call that as soon as the computer boots up. And we're going to use a cron tab for that. Now some people might frown on this, but you know, as I said before, um, enough's enough. I've got some other jobs I need to crack on with. So I'm going to go with cron tab and it'll be fine. So basically cron tab is a very much a Linux thing. It's a place where you can schedule events to happen run certain things uh, at certain intervals that sort of thing and you can even do things at boot so let's start off cron tab slash e i think means edit or the editor and you're going to come up with this file now for you it's going to be in going to have all this green stuff in there but there won't be anything to execute all these hashes are basically stuff that will get ignored to the right so it'll be all that will be ignored and then you want to paste in this line here which basically calls your script now this little tilde I think they call it it's a little squiggle if you put that squiggle there then you won't have to type in all this uh, you see that just for example slash home slash mugwai you then have to go slash startup script slash you know if you just put this squiggle it'll put all the stuff that you need in your path and then you'll need to put the startup script of course and then you can enter in um, the name of the script and basically you can see there at boot run the script now you do a control O to save it and then enter and then you do a control X to exit and that's it and now when we reboot the computer uh, that should start the server up automatically now as I say um, some of you may have had an eagle eye and noticed that I've actually got C file client running on my Linux computer here so I haven't showed you how to install that which you know, it's pretty simple stuff so there it is there that's my client there and this is remember I shouldn't have to say this you know this is a different computer right and all this information here is a result of this computer slash server running so what I'm going to do here is going to reboot the computer shut down and I'm going to click reboot now you can see I'll play none of this is working when I click around I can't drag that that's simply because the computer's off it'll take a while for this screen to update in the meantime take a look at our uh, application over here C file and you'll see what's going to happen it's got a refresh button up here I'm going to click refresh you see there's nothing there it's because the server's down so basically we just wait. Remember there's more than 40 seconds we need, we need to wait. I'm just going to go up here and refresh that. And there you go. We're back online. Alright guys, I think it's time to try and wrap this up. Uh, the server is running just fine and this is my client running and all these ticks along here are indicating that all these libraries are now synced into the cloud and uh, if you want such a client go to your C file website go to the download link and here they are here this is one here is for Windows, Mac, uh, client for Linux and a terminal client so these are sync clients these ones down here are drive clients. Um, I, I'm not a Mac user, but I have used this Windows Drive um, drive client before. They're called C Drive, and basically it integrates into the Windows File Explorer, and everything will appear as if it's a network drive. 
Here's pros and cons there, either way with the sync client or drive client. It's pros and cons with everything. And then your apps for Android and iPhone. Um, information is down here, you just grab them from the stores. Um, there is no uh, C drive equivalent for Linux, but there is something called WebDAV which is available and that can integrate nicely into the file um, manager called Dolphin. I've had that going in the past. I haven't focused on that today or on this particular install. Um, I just don't need it, but one day I might do a video on that. Now remember guys, this is only part one. One day I'll do part two. I can't promise when. Uh, if I see a lot of feedback in the comments, then I'll, I'll start pushing hard to work on part two. And part two is the what we'll do there is work on um, encrypted connections so that we can basically allow this to be accessed from outside a local area, area network. So, for example, if I <coughs> If I'm travelling away from home, I can take my laptop, uh, manipulate some data, and that'll all appear on my desktop computer here at home. Now, I don't know if I mentioned um, what this can do for you. You can log into the web interface and you can start sharing these libraries to, to other colleagues who also have accounts. And that works quite nicely. So, uh, you know, a team of you could be working on one one library. Uh, I do have a little bit of bonus content uh, coming up um, regarding a bit of a glitch and issue that I discovered with um, the screen resolution of the Raspberry Pi and also the um, the effects that that has on Chromium that's the Chromium browser so that'll be coming up after I finish jabbering here now I just want to go over, I've made a bit of a list here make sure I don't forget anything you can have multiple users and share chosen files and libraries and things so I've already said that the great thing about this is one day if I get a new computer or this computer dies well everything, all my personal data will be in the cloud. I can install a new operating system, install a client and very very quickly I can have all my data resynchronized to my computer. So that's a bonus there. Um, I'm just reading off my list here. So I've installed this on a Raspberry Pi. You don't have to install it on a Raspberry Pi of course, but for my application it's fine. and. Um, so if you have a environment where maybe you've got 30, 40 people and they're all doing sort of, and they're all sort of power users, like they've got large video files or, or um, a lot of rendering going on, you know, you might want to get a big powerful computer. Uh, but Raspberry Pi, I mean, it's I've had this running in other client um, offices and things and it's handled them just fine. So something to think about um, the USB drive that I've got oh, that's basically sort of consumer level hard drive uh, if you want to have this running in a sort of a corporate environment what, there's a word for that what is that I can't remember the word for it um, you might want to go for a RAID system it's sort of a more industrial sort of a hard drives you can still plug that into the Raspberry Pi no problem so you might want to look at that for reliability um, the Raspberry Pi I did notice the heatsink gets a little hot so make sure you get a you know a decent uh, heatsink you might like to get a fan I haven't put a fan directly into this um, enclosure because I've got another Raspberry Pi in the other room and what I intend to do is put those two into one box and then put one fan in there to extract the heat from both of them. Consider subscribing and liking and um, if I see enough feedback then I'll just put the effort in to do part two. Alright, I think that's it. Coming up is the bonus content and sorting out the Chromium and the 
resolution on the Raspberry Pi. Have a good new year. Thank you. I just want to discuss a couple of quirks, very frustrating quirks that I was dealing with this morning. And that is uh, when I tried to run Chromium, which is our browser, I had some weird behavior. There's the window would sort of black out and then it would sort of flash and then do all these silly things and um, and there were some settings that I found that would fix that but then the whole thing became sluggish and, and just just horrible, just unusable. I'm hoping by the time you guys get to get to um, you know follow this video along uh, the, the developers might have sort of fixed those things. Um, but what I found was, let me just quickly um, quickly have a look at a setting here. So if we run, uh, if we go sudo and raspi dash config, we get this utility here, right? Now, if we go down to advanced options, we get this glamour. If I turn that feature on, it would uh, fix the uh, quirk in Chromium or the screen, the window flashing and whatnot. But it would become sluggish. So I've stayed clear of glamour. Just keep that off. And what I found was this GL driver. Uh, what I did was um, first I went to this, the second line here. I used that, and then you know it didn't improve things. And then I went back to the original setting there. And then once I did that, let me just escape out of here. And once I did that, what I got was if you come up to here, follow my mouse. What I got was we go to preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration. What I ended up with is if we go to display here, you see this option here, set resolution? Well that wasn't there by default. After doing those changes in this utility, I would then get this uh, set resolution option. So I think the idea is, well, I don't think, I'm pretty sure, the, the idea is you have your headless resolution that you can set here. And then if you've got an actual physical monitor, then you set the resolution that you want with this option here. Uh, but you, clearly there's some quirks there and it's, yeah, yeah, I spent quite some time. So basically I've stayed away from setting the headless resolution which you can actually do in this utility here as well so stay away from that um, just change this GL thingy where did it go to oh, it wasn't there was it yeah change the GL driver and just change it and then go back to the original setting and then hopefully you'll get this option here. And once you get that, then you know that things are going to start playing ball. And the other quirk I found was if I right clicked on my desktop, if my mouse was toward the right hand side of this of the desktop, when I right click, this dialog will actually pop up somewhere near the middle or off to the left. So it was some weird, weird behavior. So. Oh, that was very frustrating. So again, just go down to your go down to your advanced options. Go to that, and then choose that one. And then once you've chosen that one go back to that one and you might have to do a reset of the operating system in between I can't remember but I'm I'm just done with that now I, I'm sick of playing around with that so let's move on